Are you aware that fluoride is in our public drinking water? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, I wasn't. No? Yes. Yes. I'm aware of this. Yes, I've heard that before. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Are you aware that fluoride is in our public yes, drinking water? Yes, I am. Water? Yeah. Yeah. Is it not a good thing though? No. I'm aware of it. Yeah. Yeah. Now we are. Yes. <laughs> Why do you think they put fluoride in the water? Well, perhaps they want to keep the uh, water clear or something. I have no idea. My teeth. The enamel on my teeth. Yes. Okay. Perhaps prevents decay, yeah. So I think they put it put it in the drinking water like back in the day around the time that penicillin came out as a uh, as like a as like an oral sort of preventative sort of thing. Same reason that it's in toothpaste and the stuff that you get your teeth clean and all that other stuff. I don't know to give it a better taste to clean it. I don't know. Does it kill bacteria at all? Clean it out, I guess. Is it good for uh, your your teeth? Some part of your teeth? Or? Uh, well, it's my understanding is to actually I don't know sort of clean it, but I think it's all about population control, right? Uh, they tell you it's because it helps I think strengthen your teeth enamel, but I have no idea why they really put it in there. I'm not sure. <laughs> so, do you feel it's good and safe for us? Well, I know that we have some of the safest drinking water in the world. Yeah. I don't know. I don't. I don't like chemicals being added to things that like don't need to be there. If we already have fluoride in toothpaste, then I don't see why we have to actually be ingesting it. Because you're not actually supposed to ingest it. That's why you spit the toothpaste out, right? So. No. No. Why do you feel that way? Well. Everything that's extra in the water, I don't think that's a good idea. I would, I would guess if it's in the water, it's because they did some studies and they think it's safe enough. Okay. Uh, I'm not so sure about that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. On the flip side, when I go to the dentist, I just don't get my teeth cleaned with fluoride anymore because it causes rot and all that other good stuff. No, probably not. I don't think so now. Yeah. Well, we live in a first world country, so I doubt. It would be a bad thing. I doubt they would want to poison citizens of Canada and Toronto, especially. Um, well, I know in like the stuff we're supposed to spit it out, is it bad? Like, I'm assuming it's bad for us that we're ingesting it. For us? I don't think it's safe at all. It's a poison. Sodium fluoride, mm. which is what they use, it's a poisonous chemical. Mm. It's, it's been scientifically proven to do more harm than good. Mm. How does that make you feel about it being in our water? Well, I would prefer to drink uh, bottled water. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to drink a tap water. It's kind of creepy actually, knowing that now. Yeah. It's a little alarming. Not good. <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, it's really hard to escape because I don't know if you know, it's also in almost all bottled water. So you have to make sure you look on the front tags of your bottles for 0.0, .0 ppm. Shit. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I. I don't know, I'm blown away, I can't, I can't argue that, that's messed up, man. Yeah. Well, worry about, like, nobody knows about it and it's in there. That's kind of concerning. Uh, I feel terrible about it, but what can you do? It's unacceptable. There's not really anything we can do about it. Yeah. But, uh, and I'm drinking that, actually. Yeah, how does that make you feel about knowing that it's in the water? Uh, iffy. <laughs> I don't know. It seems the general public does not know a whole lot about fluoride, and many are questioning its overall safety. Sodium fluoride, sodium silica fluoride, and fluorosilic acid, all used in dental offices, toothpaste, and water fluoridation, are toxic waste substances created from the creation processes in the fertilizer, steel, nuclear, and aluminum industries. These artificial substances should not be confused with the natural occurring fluoride element. Contrary to popular belief, fluoride used in fluoridation practices is not a pharmaceutical grade substance, but instead industrial toxic waste. When these industries were faced with the problem of how to legally dispose of the excessive amount of toxic waste they were producing, Alcoa, the Aluminum Company of America, the largest producer of fluoride at the time, hired the services of scientist Gerald J. Cox to discover whether fluoride could be beneficial for preventing tooth decay. 
Gerald Cox, with vested interest, concluded that since the natural fluoride element can help in preventing tooth decay, these poisonous chemicals can also. After the release of Cox's claims, the fluoride waste these industries produced began being trapped in the smokestacks of the factories, collected, put into barrels, and sold to municipalities to add to their drinking water. Before these industries were trapping fluoride emissions, the fluoride pollution was scorching vegetation, killing crops, and crippling livestock. Today, this very same toxic chemical is ingested by millions each day through public water supplies. While these industries solved their waste problems and began profiting, communities are now ingesting an extremely toxic chemical. You most commonly hear of fluoride being used in the dental office or in fluoridated toothpaste, as it is believed to help prevent tooth decay. The unproven theory behind the use of fluoride on teeth is that it combines with tooth enamel to make the teeth harder and more resistant to acid attacks. Hydroxyapatite, a form of calcium on the teeth, is susceptible to too much acid and will break down, leaving teeth exposed to decay. It's assumed that fluoride creates a shield for the hydroxyapatite, and with fluoride being more resistant to acid, it helps protect the teeth. All of these methods apply to fluoride being used topically. We also find the systemic use of fluoride through adding it to public drinking water. In theory, putting fluoride in the water will allow the fluoride to be ingested, pass through the body, and find its way to the teeth so the tooth enamel can be hardened. It is believed that since the use of fluoride, dental and oral health has increased greatly, and it should all be credited to the use of fluoride. Further, although fluoride is recognized as a highly toxic poison by regulation boards, it is still approved and nominated as one of the top 10 great medical innovations of our time by the Center for Disease Control. According to Christopher Bryson, author of the book The Fluoride Deception, fluoride science is corporate science, fluoride science is DDT science, it's asbestos science, it's tobacco science. Simply put, fluoride science is not science or scientific at all. It's distorted science made up by political officials who have a completely different agenda in mind other than public health. In fact, the information we have been fed about fluoride, its effectiveness, and its purpose is all highly in question. Fluoride was added to drinking water in an attempt to lower cavity rates in the late 1940s as oral health was not up to par. When fluoride was added to public drinking water, it wasn't a whole lot long after that dental records were starting to get better. However, as the graph shows, even countries where the water was completely unfluoridated, the amount of cavities dropped at the exact same rate or better. If we look even further into ingesting fluoride through the drinking water, data shows it has no benefit to the teeth whatsoever. 98% of Europe is completely opposed to having fluoride added to their water supply, versus a great percentage of North America being fluoridated. The dental records in Europe show fewer cavities and tooth decay than what occurs in North America. To put the nail in the coffin of fluoridated drinking water, in Kuopio, Finland, water was fluoridated from 1959 to 1992. As public concern raised about the use of fluoride, it was removed from the water supply in 1992 and dental records got better. With no clear benefit at all, we continue to pump this highly toxic chemical into our water supplies. What about fluoride used topically versus systemically? In other words, fluoride that comes from toothpaste and the dental office. There is no data that shows fluoride used in fluoridation practices helps prevent tooth decay. Even in topically used situations, data has shown that fluoride actually rots teeth as opposed to helping them. Teeth rot when the enamel on the outside of the tooth becomes compromised and acid begins to eat away at the inside of the tooth. If acid sits on the outside of the tooth, 
Over time, it begins to kill the adenosine diphosphatase and the enamel weakens. The problem with fluoride is, once it comes in contact with teeth, it kills the adenosine diphosphatase, which in turn compromises tooth enamel. As the findings of chemist researcher Dr. Gerard F. Judd show, not only does he find that fluoride rots the teeth, but there is absolutely no need for fluoride in creating strong tooth enamel. When looking at the dental records of Americans and Ugandans, Judd found the following. 30% of American youths ages 8 to 10 have no cavities. 100% of Ugandan youths ages 6 to 10 have no cavities. The reason Ugandan youths have three times better teeth than American youths is because they do not consume as many acidic foods, have no fluoride in their drinking water, have regular meals rather than sipping on acidic drinks all day, have more calcium and phosphate in their diet, and have fewer dentists to work on their teeth. So not only is there no evidence to show that fluoride helps prevent tooth decay, but there is plenty that shows it is quite harmful for the teeth. Fluoride is also responsible for much more than just tooth decay. Dental fluorosis is a tooth condition caused by fluoride. Fluoride is the only contributor in the creation of dental fluorosis. Dental fluorosis shows up as white or brown spots on the teeth and can also break away and pit at the enamel. Dental fluorosis is typically caused by fluoride exposed to the teeth between birth up to the age of 8. As a result of the use of fluoride, according to the CDC, dental fluorosis is found in 32% of American children. In fact, the effect fluoride can have on developing teeth is so immense that the American Dental Association and Center for Disease Control both state that parents should not be using fluoridated water for their baby's drinking water or formula. Those with evidence of dental fluorosis can also count on having too much fluoride in other areas of the body as well. Skeletal fluorosis is also common when the bones become overfluoridated. Having too much fluoride in the body poses risks to the organs and greatly increases the rate of cancer. We understand that the fluoride we use in toothpaste, water, and at the dentist is all toxic poison. We understand that there is no science to show these chemicals prevent tooth decay, but that they in fact harm teeth. Safety boards and our governments both know this very well. So why? Why do they continue to pump this toxic chemical into our water supply? The fluoride story starts in 1939, when Alcoa, the aluminum company of America, then the world's largest producer of sodium fluoride, and the Dow Chemical Company transferred its technology to Germany. At the end of World War II, the U.S. government sent Elliot Perkins, a research worker in chemistry, biochemistry, physiology, and pathology, to take over the chemical plants in Germany. Perkins quickly learned from the German scientists that they had devised a scheme during World War II using fluoride to medicate water in order to mind control the populations of cities they had taken over. It was found that fluoridation caused slight damage to a specific part of the brain in neurotransmitters, making it more difficult for the person affected to defend his freedom, causing the individual to become more docile towards authority. Hitler's eugenics program was no secret to anyone. The CIA quickly picked up where he left off, making the chemical control of an entire nation a main part of their research. As research completed by chemist Charles E. Perkins shows, any person who drinks artificially fluoridated water for a period of one year or more will never be the same person mentally or physically. 